Hey guys, um, thank you for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate it. This sermon is called Diving Deep Into Identity. Let's pray. Father, I bless you and I praise your name, God. Let your spirit, let your spirit permeate the atmosphere. Lord Jesus, just drench us in this moment with who you say we are, not who the world says we're supposed to be, or who the world says we can be. Let us in this moment get our identity from you. And Lord, I pray that you just um, permeate us with your, with your truth about identity. Because your truth, Lord, will cancel out any lie, Lord, today. Uh, speak from heaven, speak to me, and speak through me. In the name of Jesus, touch every heart, mind, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, today I'm going to talk about a very difficult issue. Um, I'm going to talk about identity. Now, there's been a lot of, um, talk about identity and, um, like, all, all this kind of, um, whole shift about identity, like, there's, there's been the pervading um, providing opinion now that you can choose who you are and who you want to be. Um, but, um, this came from an interview that I was, that I was watching from a secular celebrity, and they were talking about their children, if their children came to them and wanted to be the other gender it would be no problem. And I started to think about um, who created me and who defines identity. And if you look in Genesis, Genesis 3, I believe, it said, it said God breathed in, into man and made him a living soul. It said that we were created. God created everything in him. But with human beings, he created something that looked like himself because of all the stuff he created first. There was no one like him. The, the light wasn't like him, although he is light. Um, the birds weren't like him. The animals weren't like him. The sun and the moon wasn't like him. So he wanted to create something like him. So on the sixth day, um, I could just imagine him saying, all this stuff is great, but I need someone like me. So from the dust of the earth, he created a man. And then out of man, using a part of a man, he created a woman. And then, and then life began because he created something most like himself. We are not exactly like God. We are not God or whatever. But he created us to be most like him. And I was thinking of the whole gender, gender identity debate. And I was thinking of... Um, I was thinking of the fact that we, because he created us in Genesis, 
um, where he breathed his own breath. Could you imagine that? God breathing his own breath into you and creating you? And then Jeremiah said, I was knit together in my mother's womb. And in Psalms 139, I believe, it said, um, you have searched me and known, and known me. So looking at Genesis, looking at Jeremiah, and looking at Psalms, we get the picture that it wasn't us that created us. It was God. And because he created us, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Um, better than we know ourselves. And I said, Lord, what is the solution to this uh, gender identity thing? He said, he said, before you get to know whether you're um, a man or a woman, before you get to know what career you have, before you get to know your uh, sexual orientation, before you get to know your gender, gender identity, you need to get to know that before all of that, before, um, before your race, before anything about yourself, it said, tell them they need to know that they are mine. And that's what the Lord wants me to tell you today. Before, before gender identity, before racial identity, before able identity, whether, whether able or disabled, before any of that rapping, you need to know that you are his. And he says, because all of these scriptures that I mentioned in Genesis, in Jeremiah, um, in Psalms 139, it says, um, it says, you make your bed in hell. I'm there. Wherever you are, I'm there. Like, whatever you do, I'm there. Um, it's like, and it says, he knows every hair on your head. So in order to know who you really are and what your identity is on whatever level, you need to know first that you are his. And after knowing that you are, are his, the outcome of that, would be uh, what your makeup is and what your gender is and what your what what your um, uh, race is. Before any of that, before the world tells you who you are, get to know who you are from the Father. And I'm not saying. Just get to know whether you to be a teacher or a preacher or whatever you're supposed to do for your career. Because he created you from his likeness. Because he breathed himself into you. He knows who you are inside and out. And I'm saying... If you're having confusion about your race, your gender identity, everything, before you go to culture or even your own feelings about who you are, uh, because feelings change from day to day, go to the one who created you and go through who you are in all aspects. You can say, 
Lord, who I am, who am I in this respect? What is my career supposed to be? Like, what is my identity as a gender, if that's an issue for you? What career am I supposed to have? But that all comes after knowing you're his. And when you and when you do this deep dive in gender and gender identity, go through every aspect that you're confused about. If you're if you're having uh, feelings for the same gender and you're not sure and you're not sure you're like what is this and you're not you're not really sure go to god and don't ask him to take it away ask him to reveal uh, what it is in you because he knows you inside and out beloved and nobody but him can tell you who you really are not even yourself so so dive deep into your identity and not just your identity dive deep into yourself feel every emotion that you're afraid to feel stop running from yourself stop hiding from yourself face yourself because what the devil likes is darkness and what the Lord wants you to do today is face every dark place, every molestation, every demonic disturbance, just face it. And I'm not saying in the, like, just to let people in the church, you know, uh, come after you. I'm saying you have to face it. Nobody can tell you who you really are, except for him, not even you. Because, beloved, you didn't create yourself. God created you. The loving God, the, the omniscient God, the God that created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. He created you so he knows everything about you like you don't need to figure out who you are all you need to do is ask god who am i and not even just for sexuality purposes and not even just for uh, gender identity purposes Ask him who you're supposed to be in every aspect, whether it be your career, whether you're having a racial identity thing going on. Ask the Lord, the one who gave you his breath, who you are. And like people can say whatever, 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 but the only person the only spirit who can tell you who you are is God. Because, like, they, they don't know you like he does. They don't love you like he does. The greatest person could love you, but nobody could love you like God. So he knows you inside and out. He knows what gender you're supposed to be. He understands your confusion. He understands your feelings. He understands if there are whole hormonal changes. He understands all of that. And people as well-meaning as they are, they don't understand that. So the best thing to do if you're having any confusion at all with who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be and what career or whatever, or even what gender you're supposed to be, 
before you go to your feelings, before you go to your friends, before you go to your foes, before you go to anybody, before you go to culture that says you could be who you want to be. Go to the one who knows who you are. He loves you. Despite what anybody says, he loves you. Despite what you've heard, he loves you. He thinks you're awesome. He thinks you're great. God didn't make any anyone uh, a mess. He thinks you're great. He knows who you are and he knows what he's got plans for you. In Jeremiah 29 11, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and give you a hope in the future. And, or the KJV says, an expected end. Um, but my question is, what end are you expecting? If he says, I, uh, I, um, he wants to give you an expected end, what end are you expecting? And if you don't know that either, just go to God and say, God, what end am I, go am I supposed to be expecting? There are so many broken people afraid to embrace who, who God has called them to be or afraid to tackle the hard things of life, afraid to actually ask. But afraid to actually ask, Lord, what is this I'm feeling? I I was born a boy, but I want to be a girl. What is this? So instead of going to God, we go to friends, we go to society, and say, and they say, Oh, be who you want to be. And I would say, Be who God has created you to be. And if you are not sure who that is, go to God. Ask him the hard questions. He's just waiting for you to stop hiding and, and ask him the hard questions. Go down deep. Don't be afraid to feel the pain of the molestation. Don't be afraid to just just go there. Katie Couric has an interesting book. It's called Going There. And when I saw the title of the book, I said, we don't often like going there, but I'm going there today. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you, I'm giving you the tools to sit alone with God and go to every disgusting every place that you don't like thinking about. Go to your awful divorce. Go there because it's only by going there and pulling up the root that you can be free. And you may need help going there. You may need a therapist. You may need someone to guide you. But don't be afraid to go there. You can't fix what you ignore. To fix it, to be, to get true freedom, you, you don't just need to pray and speak in tongues. You need to go there and stare that devil right in the face and say, you need to feel all of the emotion. And then you need to stare that devil in the face and say, no more. You're not dealing with me no more in that regard. I'm done with you. I've had it. You need to just go there and feel all the pain, feel all the emotion. Maybe the lack of healing, beloved, is not because you, you're a bad person and God just doesn't want to heal you or you're, you're just going to be this way all your life and all negative, whatever. Maybe it's because you won't go there. You refuse to feel the pain of your childhood. You refuse to feel the pain of your divorce. 
You refuse to feel all that pain. And the Lord is saying, I can't heal you unless you won't go, unless you go there. Go to the places that are disgusting. Go to the places that make you uncomfortable. Go there because on the other side of that, beloved, is healing. On the other side of that, beloved, is freedom. And the Lord wants you to be free today. The Lord says, want you to struggle with gender identity. Forget about what you heard from the church. Forget about what you heard from people. Forget about what, you, what you've heard from society. Even forget about what you feel. Go to God and ask him in every aspect, Lord, who am I? And don't, and don't be afraid of the answer because the answer may be scary. The answer may be hard to deal with. The emotions may be heavy, but on the other side of that, beloved, it's freedom. It's freedom. It's wholeness. It's holiness. And one more thing I want to say. Holiness. Wholeness is possible. Wholeness is possible. You don't have to live broken. You can live whole because God has designed you to live whole. God has designed you to live out his purpose in your life. A lot of people say, find your purpose, find your purpose. No, I believe it's find his purpose and let his purpose become your purpose. So you find, in finding yourself, you find his purpose for your life. And in finding his purpose for your life, you work that out and that becomes your purpose. Not you work that out. He helps you work that out and that becomes your purpose. And I, this is just so uh, prevalent in this society because people are like, do what you feel. What you feel is right. Just do it. Do you. No. D do him. Do what he's called you to do. The person he's called you to be. And he is the master of your identity. Not not you, not how you feel, not who you think you are, who he's called you to be. And he wants you to sit alone with him to ask those difficult questions. And for your information, you can't pray something away. You need to, you need to work, work it out. Work out your own salvation with, with fear and trembling. This whole thing about pray the gay away or you can just pray it away. No, you cannot just pray it away. You pray to work it out. You pray to work it out and settle it within yourself. Prayer illuminates. Prayer doesn't hide or dismiss it or, oh, we'll just pray it away. No, that's wrong teaching. You pray to work it out. Prayer mean, prayer illuminates heaven to help you, to give you the tools to work it out, to get healing, to get real restoration. And the Lord wants you to be freed and restored today. And he wants you to not pray the gay away, but pray to work it out. Pray to find out who you are and whose you are. And that revelation has to come on your own. That revelation has to come from the Lord to you. No, no person in your church, no pastor, Nobody can tell you who you are except God. They can help you once you find out. They could be tools or conduits of his word.
but they cannot, they cannot identify for you. So the Lord wants you to find your true identity today. The Lord wants you to get alone with into every disgusting place today. And the Lord wants to free you. Thank you, Lord, for being what you what you are today, who you are to us today. Thank you, Lord, for being the number one identifier of our gifts, our talents our gender and despite every agenda that is contrary to your word of oh God we come to you to discover who you who who you have made us to be thank you for your freedom thank you for your tremendous audacious love for us oh God teach us how to be strong in finding ourselves and finding our identity in every single way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I will see you next week. Take care. Bye. Sunset free is free indeed. I'm a child of Sai.